Good morning. Look at all the wonderful people out there. Oh my God. Look, look at here. Look at here. Miss Diane Collins out in Australia. Thank you so much. And Ozzy joining us. Man, you were great with the uh, information last night. Thank you so much. Appreciate you so much. Man, I tell you, hold on. Let me get these people in. Mr. Carter's joining. Okay, hold on a second. All these beautiful, happy faces. Hey, I'd like to give a shout out real quick to Ms. Kona, uh, Konohara over in Japan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mr. Ed, Edmund Smith, thank you so much. Miss Joyce Brewer, thank you so much for joining. And don't forget tonight at 6 o'clock, I'm going to go to support her on her PBR tonight at 6 o'clock. She gave that information out before, but we want to thank her uh, for that tonight at 6 o'clock on her PBR. I'm going to go on that to support that. Uh, Miss Castro, this Sunday, she'll be training us on a subject that is soon to come. So we can't, I can't wait to hear that young lady. Man, we've got so many superstars in this business. We just love you, love you, love you, love you. We also like to thank Ms. Perry for joining us. Ms. Marcia Carter, thank you so much. Ms. Natalie in Las Vegas. Ms. Tracy Gilmore, part of the bakery organization as well. Mr. Winston Herbert, thank you so much. Ms. Zoe Duffy, for part of the bakery organization, thank you so much. Ms. Jones with crew way out there in South Carolina. Woohoo! I love it, I love it. I want some more of it. Hey, another other than our guest speaker for tomorrow's on here. Yeah, you know that is, don't you? The great, the one and only, the incomparable, Mr. Regional Director, Mr. Julian Lewis from San Diego, California. Yay! He's going to be our guest speaker tomorrow. I can't wait. For, man, we got some, man, we got, ooh, I'm loving these calls. Hey, Mr. Harrison Mill down in Fresno, California. Thank you. Let's head on north of California to Elk Grove, California, where Patricia and Frank Bowman are there together. There they are. They're all munched together. I love to see you guys sitting together. You guys bless my heart to see you guys. I love it. Miss Melissa Vaughn, I see you again on here. Thank you, dear, for coming on. Mr. Pio down in Japan. Thank you, sir, for joining. Wow, all the way from Japan. And here we can't get nobody to come across the street. <laughs> Miss, uh, uh, Miss, uh, uh, oh, 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 uh, Miss, Miss McDonald, thank you so much. Tamara McDonald down in San Diego area. Thank you. That lady is doing some wonderful things. Uh, Miss Belinda B Batiste, I see you jumped on here. I saw that when you jumped on here. Thank you so much. And I think I give a shout out to great Mr. Bill Bailey. That guy is moving some numbers every single week. So I want to thank you all. Hey, before I get started with our guest speaker today, last night, if you were not on the training call last night, Mr. Bree Clements had Miss um, Char uh, uh, Char Charmaine from, from Spears training. Miss Collin, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't that amazing? Man, Spears is, uh, man, that training last night was amazing. Uh, if you didn't, go back to the channel, go back to the channel, go back to the channel. That's right, go back to the channel and rewatch it because it was amazing training. That lady came with, I mean, scripts, what to say, I guarantee you $250, I can beat your, I mean, she had some great stuff last night. So if you missed it, go back to the channel and re-listen. Go back to the channel and re-listen. Ms. Collins said it was truly sensational because they have spirits also in Canada as well as Australia. So we want to thank Mr. Brie Clemens for that last night. That was amazing training. That was amazing. Thank you. Well, let's see here. Uh, today, you saw the flyer up there. Uh, you know, you already know our guest speakers. You saw it in front of Mr. King's home. You saw her and I to get the radio station there in Fresno. Uh, we're excited about having her on again today. And uh, without further ado, let me, let me, oh, what happened to my phone? What happened? What happened here? Uh, okay, there we go. Without further ado, let me just give you a, a proper description. <clears throat> this lady, she sent me this big boss. <laughs> let me see her face. Let me see her face. Where's her face? Where's her? There she is with that big old fight. Look at that. See, I kept this. This was a season cheer from her. I kept it. She wrote me a nice letter. Where's she at? She wrote me a nice letter. See, I kept that. Well, you know, you know, the love that you have in this business, and I, and I, let me say this before I get started and introduce this lady. I apologize if some of you think I'm, my pastor apologized yesterday. I thought I, 
Yeah, I apologize, you guys that got really come on your hard. I just want the best for you. Does that make sense? I just want the best for you. So please forgive me if, if you think I'm harsh. I just want the best for you. All right, let's go back to our guest speaker. <laughs> her and her husband are business owners. They flip gas stations throughout the state of California. Mm -hmm. She's a great community leader. Oh, yeah. Her mother, uh, she's a mother of two beautiful fur babies. <laughs> when I go back to her house, they lick me to death. They're regional directors on the way to RVP. She has a master's degree in, uh, uh, well, she has a master's degree and a bachelor's degree, yes. She come from a long line of entrepreneurs and business owner. She owned her first business right out of college, knowing that college was not the answer, before she was 26 years old. She's a future SVP Circle of Champions member in our business, and she wants Mr. Bree Clemens to know she's going to beat him. Is that, oh, is that my... <laughs> Can we have some fun? God bless everybody. It's a Monday. It's Monday. Without further ado, from the Fresno, California area, the one and only, the great, you know her, and she has her own Wednesday night call, Miss Natasha Isbell. Good morning. I see what you did there, Mr. Thomas. Okay, I see what you did there. So I want to thank you so much because I've kind of been MIA over the weekend. And you guys can hear me, right? We're good? Okay. So I've been kind of MIA over the weekend because what I was doing was, number one, I mean preparing for this call, right? But I was really taking some time to kind of look back at the past few months and like, okay, what is it that we've really done? And what is it that we can do? Because obviously we know that other people are having success in these times, right? We all know that. So we can do the same, right? So I want to thank Mr. Thomas for giving me the opportunity to be on the call today. And I was so, so, so humbled, excited, nervous when he asked me to do two Mondays back to back. I was just like, uh, okay, I'll do it, right? Because if a senior vice president that pours into you that much is asking you to, you know, pour into his whole team, you don't say no, first of all, right? And second of all, you take it as such a huge honor to even be asked that. I mean, this gentleman is so selfless. He's traveled the world. He's seen more than all of us combined probably in our lifetime. Let me say that again. He's seen more in his lifetime alone than probably all of us combined in our lifetime. So I want to just take this moment to really thank Mr. Thomas because without him just every single like day after day, night after night pouring into us. I mean, nobody else gets that. So Mr. Thomas, thank you. And we love you so much. And the fact that he still has those cards. I mean, I have a whole stack of every single card or anything that I've ever gotten. And, you know, I like, we cherish those, right? Like how many of us know that it's the little things that make the biggest difference, right? So just know that, whatever okay success leaves clues okay if your senior vice president is doing it should we do it <clears throat> we should right so it was just really crazy to see that he kept it so thank you so much mr thomas i don't want to cry so we're gonna get right into it how many of us were on the call last week the monday that i did okay cool so before we get started, I realized that I was talking to everyone like everybody knew me already, but not everybody knows our story, right? So let me give like a quick little introduction about who I am, okay? Now, my name is Natasha, and you guys know that, you know, my husband is Hussein Ismail. Mr. Thomas said that we flip, you know, gas stations, commercial properties, things like that. And I mean, we didn't always start out that way, right? So my parents immigrated here from Pakistan, and then, you know, some miraculous way they found each other when they were in like two different states off of somebody else's wedding video, okay, which is crazy. And, you know, here comes me, right, born in Los Angeles, and we didn't really have any money. Like, my dad, you know, worked odd jobs here and there. He was, you know, lost his dad when he was very, very young, and he just always had that hunger and drive, right? And because he's, like, an entrepreneur, right? And we know that's a trait of an entrepreneur. So, you know, after my parents had me, my dad you know, got a job as a bellboy at a hotel. How many of us know the Ramada, right? We know the Ramada. He knows exactly which one he worked at. And, you know, he worked his way up, you know, got up to valet and then just all of this stuff. And, you know, he was able to one day buy his own business. And he started out with a tobacco shop. 
right? And this was back like back in the 90s. And you know, from there, step by step by step. Now imagine going from being like a kid in Pakistan on the streets selling tea to people on the side of the road. Like that's what my dad did on the side of the road. Six, seven, eight years old selling tea to people on the side of the road to support his family of six other siblings, his widowed mom that would go to people's houses to wash dishes. That's what my grandma did to get money to raise the family. So can we agree that she had the hustle too, right? Now, working his way up slowly, 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 and you know, now he's built like this business empire, but you know, the way that our human mind works is we always see the end result and we don't tend to look at the journey behind it. And even if we do look at the journey behind it, we don't tend to understand it, right? We're just like, oh my God, he had to eat out of trash cans. Oh my God, he had to eat tuna for a month. Like, we don't understand it because we just take it as, oh, it's a story, right? So, you know, growing up, I mean, they instilled education because how many of us agree, like, we, if you've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, like Mr. Thomas tells us, you know that Robert Kiyosaki talks about, you know, how the education system, da da da, right? So, you know, I did everything, right? And my first business was actually when I was like 10. I made these flower pens and I sold them at school for Mother's Day, okay? So that was my first business, all right, without being official or anything. So, you know, growing up education, right? So I did, I did what my parents told me to do. Went to job, I mean, went to job, went to school, right? Got a good education and then I had to go out and find a job. So after high school, college, then what? Another degree, then what? Another degree, right? And then what happened in the end? I do network marketing now. Like, nothing to do with exercise physiology, which is what I started. And we know that 85% of people that study a subject don't even end up going into that field. How many of us are a part of that? Like you study for something completely different. And now like you're an ACN and you do like something else on the side, like nobody grows up thinking, oh, I'm gonna be a network marketer, right? Like Mr. Lewis has talked about it. Like nobody thinks about that, but life happens, right? And so fast forward into college when I was at the tail end of getting my master's degree, okay? One of my friends, he approached me and he's like, yo, we gotta talk. And I was like, okay, talk, like I'm here, right? And he's like, no, 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 like we gotta talk. And I was like, okay, let's talk. He's like, no, 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 I can't tell you about it. And I was like, what? Like, what do you mean you can't tell me about it, right? He's like, it's about business. You gotta talk business. I was like, okay, cool. Like, we've done business together before. Like, what is it? He's like, I can't tell you. I was like, look, let me tell you something. I'm two weeks away from getting my master's degree, working on my thesis, finalizing everything. I'm working two jobs, okay? Plus full-time, like, dog mom, okay? Full-time daughter, wife, all the above, right? Working two jobs, and I was teaching. And I was like, dude, like, I... Like, I don't have time for this. Like, you need to tell me now or like, I like, forget it, right? I was one of the people that we don't want to talk to now, okay? But he knew that I was like shark-minded. Like, I'm like always like, okay, what's next, right? Mr. Thomas is laughing because he knows. So, you know, I was like, what's next, right? So he's like, okay, look. So there's these services, right? And you get to be a wholesaler and you get, you know, you get, money on services and i was like like my face guys when i tell you like my face was just like what the are you talking about right like i looked at him and i was like you're on drugs okay i don't have time for this catch me after graduation okay now what do you think he did did he forget about me or did he follow up he followed up obviously right now was he smart for doing that or not very, very smart, right? So long story short, he goes to an international event. Now, for those of you that have never been to an international event, those are our biggest, like, granddaddy of all events when we could meet back in person, like, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people in an arena, like, music's going crazy, people are dancing, there's lights everywhere, the sound, the ground is shaking because you feel like there's an earthquake, but there's not, and he went to one of those. And he posted, this is why posting stuff on social media is so important. This is why we did the trainings. He posted a video. Now, understand, he posted a video of it when it was empty, okay? 
the stadium was like empty. People were just like trickling and the music wasn't even going yet, okay? He posted a video and it was like this whole stadium and people were like coming in and I was like, I messaged him, I was like, hey, like, where are you? What are you doing, right? And remember, this is like, after graduation, I blew him off, like before, right? Blew him off before. So he's like, remember that thing I told you about? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, we'll talk when I get back. And I know that line came from my regional director, Mr. King. I know it did, okay? He was showing Mr. King the messages that I was sending him. And he was like, hey, say this. So what did he basically do? Like, took me and left me hanging, right? I was like, what do you mean we'll talk when you get back? Like, no, tell me now, right? But he didn't. He made me wait. And how many of us know that, like, when somebody's like, oh, my God, I have to tell you something. Oh, my God, Diana, I have to tell you something. And they're just like, well, what is it? I'll tell you later. Who hates that? Like, raise your hand. Like, who hates? when somebody does that to you, but how much more does it make you want to know, right? Like how much more are you just like, dude, like, what are you talking about? Like, just tell me, right? I had that feeling. And as soon as he came back from international, he had a private business reception at Denny's and the rest is history. After I went to three wrong Denny's, by the way, okay? Cause he didn't tell me which one. He just said Denny's in this town. And there's like 10 Denny's in that town. So I went to three different ones and then I finally found it but we were the only ones that signed up that night. We had no video, we had no nothing. All I saw was Mr. King, and then I saw somebody else, and then I saw my friend, and then I saw people I didn't know, and we just had the one through 10 sheet of paper, and that was it. All we understood when we saw ACN was, people pay this that they're handcuffed to for their whole life, and we get this. Like, that was it. And we started dreaming again. We were like, oh my God, can you just imagine, like, can you imagine how much money we can make? Because that means that we can do whatever we want to do. You won't have to be stuck at work. I won't have to be stuck at work. Like, there, no overhead, no, like, you know, employees calling in sick and you have to run in the middle of the night. Like, we don't have to go through that. We can design our life how we want to design it. And then the situation happens this year, right? So, I want to ask everybody a question. This is going to lead me into my topic. How many of us have been impacted by whatever's going on the past few months in any way, shape, or form? Raise your hand. Any way, shape, or form, physically, mentally, family, friends, anything. Now look around. Every single person has been impacted by what's happening. But how many of us have taken it negatively and how many of us have taken it positively and actually taken action and done something about it yeah in the beginning you can take your time right because this this has never happened before like mr thomas said like the world shut down the stars are aligned like everything everything is in your favor but why couldn't we move forward why did everybody get so paralyzed and stuck and i talked about this before it's because fear right that word fear it's such a small four letter word, but yet it holds people back from going after their dreams. It holds people back from really becoming who they are, for really going after what they want. How many of us have ever thought about something, thought about a problem or a situation, and we just made it so big in our head and, you know, we feel all the feelings of like anxiety, pressure, all this stuff, and then that thing never ends up happening. How many of us have gone through that? Like you think about something so much, you can't sleep at night, you can't breathe, like all this stuff. And then it ends up not even happening. Right? Ms. Belinda's like, yep, like me right here, right? So understand that everybody has gone through so much in the past three months. And understand that you don't have to stay there. That four letter word is keeping you there. But there's another word, there's another word that has one extra letter and it also starts with an F. That letter can completely take the fear and demolish it, can completely remove it from your existence, can completely change everything drastically, can change your mind, your body, your spirit, it can change it all. Who knows what that five letter word is? Just raise your hand. Oh, Mr. Smith got it. It's 
faith. That five letter word, faith, has one extra letter than fear. It still starts with an F, but the meaning is completely different. Now, you don't have to answer this, but how many of us just have faith? It doesn't have to be, you know, God or just anything, whatever your faith is, but how many of us just have that faith? I just got the chills. I'm like getting like Mrs. Driscoll now, getting the chills. So how many of us just have faith that it's going to be okay? You know, we've all heard that quote, if it's not like, it'll all be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end, right? I knew somebody that got that tattooed because they loved it so much, like whatever, right? So just think about those two words while I tell you a quick story. Is that okay? You guys want to hear a story? It's a really, it's like my favorite story. And I don't know if you guys are going to figure it out by the end, but we'll see. Oh, before that. So everybody get your notebooks. Everybody has a notebook and pen. I see Ms. Diane already like going through pages of notes already. And I love her so much. She has woken up, ladies and gentlemen, at 2 a.m. in Australia to be on this call, to listen to the message today and every day with Mr. Thomas. So can we just like, and Japan, Japan, like, oh my gosh, we got Japan. We have California, New York, like Hawaii. We have so many people from around the world. Like, I just want to thank you guys for being on here. Cause like, I've, you guys, your energy is like, I'm getting more energy. Okay. So I'm going to give you two words. Okay. I already gave you fear and faith, right? The two F words that we're going to use, right? We're going to use one of them, not the other one. So these two words, they both start with the D. Okay. Now, how many of us know the definition of defeat? To defeat someone. We know it, right? But we, have we ever looked at the actual definition? Probably not, right? So I'm going to give you the definition of defeat. Okay, so everybody write this down. Defeat. To win victory over. To win victory over. Comma. Overcome. Okay, so to win victory over. Comma. Overcome. Comma. Or beat. Just like beat it, like the Michael Jackson song that Mr. Thomas plays, all right? So the definition of defeat is to win victory over, comma, overcome, comma, or beat. All right, so everybody got that? Raise your hand if you got it. All right, cool. <clears throat> now, let me show you the power of just giving a little bit more. Because do we know the difference between being... Like everybody remembers the report cards in elementary, right? You get poor, average, satisfactory, good. Who hated the, I hated those, right? I would look at my, I'm like, what do you mean satisfactory? Like what, I'm amazing. Like, what do you mean satisfactory, right? And so what's the difference between giving poor performance and average performance? Just a little bit, right? What's the difference between average performance and satisfactory performance? Just a little bit, right? What's the difference between average and good performance? Or satisfactory and good, whatever, you guys get it, right? So just a little bit, right? Now what's the difference between being good and great? Good and great, just a little bit, right? Now let me show you how an addition of two letters to this word defeat changes everything. You guys ready? So I basically gave you the second word, which is defeated, okay? Defeated, this is the second word. Number one, defeat, to win victory over, comma, overcome, comma, or beat. Now the second word, defeated, defeated. All we added at the end was the ED, education, okay? The ED. All right, two letters. The definition of defeated, having been beaten in battle or contest, okay? So defeated, having been beaten in a battle or contest, okay? The second definition of defeated is demoralized or overcome by adversity, okay? So first one of defeated, having been beaten in a battle 
or contest. Second definition, demoralized or overcome by adversity. Okay. And if you guys don't catch it, recording is going to be available soon. Okay. So <clears throat> my question then is, how many of us have ever felt defeated before with the ED at the end? How many of us have just, there's something just happened and we just felt defeated. We were just like, like, I don't know if I can do this, right? Like the world, life, whatever, like just got to you so hard. And it was just like, I feel defeated, right? But how many of us want to know, instead of being defeated, how to get to the other side of defeat? To win victory over, overcome or beat. How many of us want to know how to get to that side? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Caroline's like, yeah, woo. Okay, so now remember last Monday, I said Miss Chanel Burt has her IBOs do something which was take your phone, right? And record into it, enough is enough. And you're gonna play that every single day. By a show of hands, and if you didn't do it, like, I'm not gonna come after you, please know that. Like, how many of us actually did it? Just be honest, raise your hand. And if you didn't, it's okay. If you didn't, it's okay. But how many of us did it? Okay. Now, just by looking around, only a few, right? So, understand the ratios and understand the numbers now were you on this side of doing it or were you on this side of not doing it okay now if you be honest with yourself could we probably have done it like it literally took like 10 seconds maximum right we all could have done it right but the difference is not all of us did it the difference is every single person that heard my voice knew what to do but not every single person did it the difference between success is taking action and actually doing something with the knowledge that you have with the information that you've been given actually taking action how hard was that a 10 second video like 10 seconds to keep you going for every single day to do this for your future and for your family's future Okay, now pay attention because I'm gonna get into my story. Okay, and it's like my favorite story. All right, now I want everybody to just go ahead, shake it out real quick. Shake your hands, shake your arms, just kind of relax a little bit. All right, now imagine this. Mr. Thomas is like getting jiggy with it. Stop it. All right, so imagine this. Okay, the year is 1946. Okay. In Hell's Kitchen, which is a neighborhood in Manhattan, New York, in a charity ward, there's a woman that's about to give birth, okay? So I want you to imagine this woman that's like going crazy, right? She's like, oh my God, I have a baby, right? She's in a charity ward, which back then was like this volunteer pop-up hospital shop kind of thing, okay? Who would ever want to go deliver a baby there? I hope no one. Okay, cool. But no choice right? Because if you don't have money, you don't have choices, okay? So remember, money equals choices, okay? Now, in a charity ward with 30 beds, there's this woman that's about to give birth, and in comes this volunteer doctor, okay? Volunteer doctor. What does that even mean? Volunteer doctor, okay? He's like, I can deliver the baby, right? And so the woman's just like, okay, like, she has no choice, right? And then you start, to, you start to feel her pressure, right? She starts to push and out comes a baby boy, okay? Now with this baby boy, remember they used to like check up on the babies and you know, okay, like eyes, ears, nose, everything is okay, right? So this volunteer doctor, which was not even like any certification or anything, takes a pair of forceps and he just like opens the baby's mouth, okay? To check like if he's okay. I don't know what he was doing, but he opened it, okay? He paralyzed that boy's jaw, paralyzed it, okay? So what do you guys think that did? It was a permanent paralysis, right? So growing up, one, two, three, four, five, he couldn't, he couldn't speak to the point where people could understand him, right? Now imagine, you know, someone having a child and you can't understand them, like that'd be painful, right? You would think to yourself, like this kid's never gonna amount to anything. He's trying to tell me he wants milk and I can't understand him, 
He's telling me he's hungry and I can't understand him. How many of us sometimes feel like people don't understand us because we have a different message, right? Okay. So he was made fun of, okay? Now, because his parents were working so much, they dropped him off in a little boarding place, okay? Now, nowadays we call it a retirement home, but it was a boarding home for older folks, okay? So understand this little boy with a paralyzed jaw grew up around seniors, okay? Now, can we, can we agree that they have wisdom, right? People that are older have wisdom because you get knowledge by getting information, right? But you get wisdom by going through it. So why do you think that, you know, Mr. Thomas is so knowledgeable and he has so much wisdom and he pours that knowledge into us. And no matter how much he pours it into us, sometimes you just learn by doing. And that's how you get wisdom, by doing, okay? Now remember the 10 second video, doing versus knowing what to do, okay? <clears throat> so he grew up, you know, just around seniors and you know not knowing what to do he was made fun of like his whole life okay and then something hit him life happened his parents divorced okay and we know like a lot of people get divorced right so for him i mean imagine being a kid and you're over here your jaws paralyzed you can't speak people can't understand you and then your parents are splitting up like what is happening right and his dad growing up would always tell him you're never going to amount to anything you're never gonna be anything. You're not gonna be able to do anything. So you better start using your body because you don't have much of a brain. Now imagine telling a child, I think it was about 10, 12 years old at the time, telling him, look, you're never gonna be anything. How many of those kids or how many of us would have just been like, dang, like, okay, I guess I'm not, right? How many of us would have started maybe believing that, right? How many of us tell ourselves the same thing till this day? How many of us do that to ourselves? Right? I see some heads shaking. I don't see any tears yet, so that's good, right? I would have started bawling by now. But, you know, we tell ourselves things like this every day, and we know that they're not true, right? Just like with the little boy, we're like, oh, my God, that's preposterous. Like, how can he tell a kid that? That's so, like, like, you have to be so messed up as a dad to even tell a kid that, right? Like, how messed up is that? So why do we do it to ourselves? And remember when Mr. Julian Lewis talked about it, self-love, right? But how many of us are so hard on ourselves, but we would never tell that to a kid? Like, how many of us have children and you would never, ever, like, even think about saying that to them? right? Now, after that, <clears throat> he saw a movie, okay? He saw a movie and it had like this action guy, like he was beating up people, throwing people around and all of that stuff. And who's ever been so inspired by a movie that you're just like, oh my God, like, that's like me. Like I can, oh my God, like I'm going to change my life. Like I'm going to start, you know, drinking water in the morning and work out. Da -da. How many of us have ever been so inspired by something that you were just like, oh my God, like, this is it. Like, this is going to change my life, right? Okay. So it changed his life. It changed everything for him because he grew up not wanting to know what he did. His parents told him, like, you know, you're never going to be anything. And kids made fun of him. They were like, because his jaw, like, it was hanging, right? Like, his lip kind of hung over and people would be like, what are you doing? Hanging an umbrella? Like, kids are mean, right? Kids are mean. And he found something when he saw that movie. Like he had something inside of him. Like he just had like this fire that was lit. You know, have you ever had that time when you find something and you're just like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is it. This is what I've been waiting for, right? So he, you know, he started going home and he walked by a junkyard. How many of us would like avoid a junkyard at all costs? Like all of us, right? So he walked by this junkyard and he looks over and remember he's like 14, okay? And he just saw this movie and he's like, aha moment, right? walks by this junkyard and you know he starts making weights out of like pieces of wood and hubcaps and all of this stuff and he starts working out he starts building muscle because that actor inspired him okay inspired him now when he got to college he was like all right i guess it's time for me to go to college right he applied 
to school after school after school after school in the US. Guess how many he got accepted to? None. Okay, none. Not even the College of the Ozarks took him. Okay, that's what he said. Not even the College of the Ozarks took me. All right. Now, so he applied to Switzerland, went over there, came back, dropped out, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, he moved to New York. Okay, 17, 18 years old, moved to New York. Okay. He moved to an apartment that he found with just a backpack. Now imagine living in Switzerland for a couple years. Now you're moving all the way to New York with just a backpack on your back. He had a couple records in there. He had a pair of jeans and I think like a t-shirt and a pair of shoes. Some people have actually moved to different countries with just that, right? Now, he found this apartment for $79 a month. $79 a month. How many of us would take that apartment in a heartbeat? $79 a month, okay? We'd all, we'd all jump on it, right? Now, this apartment was so small and dingy and understand he was broke. He was broke. The first six months, he could not pay his electricity bill. He lit candles to have light. Now, how many of us, two days after no electricity, we like go crazy when they like magically shut it off, right? Now, he had odd jobs, you know, he cut fish, he worked at the zoo, he was a delivery boy, but at night, he got a job as an usher at a movie theater. Because remember, that movie inspired him and changed his life. You guys following me? Hands up, yep, okay. He would tape films. He would tape films. He would sneak in his tape recorder, and you guys remember back then tape recorders were like huge. He'd sneak them in, he would record the movies, and he would take them home. How many of us have ever recorded stuff that Mr. Thomas has said or another senior vice president? We've recorded it, right? We're like, oh my God, this is gonna change my life. It's gonna help me so much. And then you never listen to it again, right? Like that's happened even on like the YouTube channel, right? Because people are like, oh my God, this is so amazing when you're in the moment. But then when you're gone, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so he would take films and he would write them over how he wanted to write them over, like what he would say, what he would do and all of that stuff, okay? So he started, you know, he was like, okay, I'm gonna go on an audition, okay? Like, this is it, I'm gonna be an actor, I'm gonna do it, right, Mr. Thomas, I'm gonna do it, okay? He's like, I'm gonna be an actor, this is it. Went to audition, after audition, after audition. Now, how many of us have shown the business and gotten a few no's and we start to get discouraged, right? Now understand, he was getting shot down just based off his looks, okay? Now remember, paralyzed job, okay? He got collectively, who thinks they know how many no's this person got and still kept going? Like how many, like just say, say numbers, put it in the chat, like whatever you guys think. He got over 1,000 no's in a row. 1,000 no's in a row. How many of us did the 100 chart thing? There's no way that you could go more than like 50 without getting, right? You could get no after no after no. And after like the third or fourth one, we're like, oh my God, like this isn't working. I don't know if this is for me, right? How many of us have done that, right? Okay, now long story short, he goes back to his apartment one day and he gets this idea and he starts writing a script. He starts writing a movie. And he has that gut feeling again that this is it. I really have something here. And then a bunch of other stuff happened. Maybe I'll continue the story another time. But who knows who I'm talking about? Who knows who I'm talking about, right? Everybody sit back, put your shoulders back. Who knows who I'm talking about? That man went on to be known as Rocky Balboa, okay? Sylvester Stallone. That is his story, Sylvester Stallone, okay? Rocky, right? Now, he became a champion. He became a legend. He became a legacy, right? He created a legacy. Like, Rocky's going to live on forever. I'm just one of those fans, right? So Rocky is his legacy. What's yours? How many of us have thought about what our legacy is going to be like? And I talked about this before too, right? Building a legacy. Now, what traits did he have? So you guys can put it in the chat. You guys can mouth them because I can see you. 
what were some characteristics and some traits that he had? What were they? What were they? He was hungry, right? He was hungry, he was motivated, he had persistence and he had faith, right? Now the one thing I was looking for, well, two things, and Mr. Edmund, I don't know how he did it, like we must be connected or something, but persistence and faith. He had those two. Did he think about the first F word, fear? He was like, I don't care, like I'm still gonna do it, right? Because sometimes when you're, when your gift is so different or what you do is so different, you feel outcasted, right? Like flat out, how many people on here just sometimes you're just like, dude, I don't fit in here. Like these people don't get it, right? We pay bills, you get money. Like how hard is that? How hard is that, right? Like, is it really that hard? No, like you pay a bill, you get paid. Like, hello, like anybody home like what Mr. Thomas does, right? Hello. So perseverance, I want everyone to write this word down, okay? Perseverance. And I'm going to give you the definition of perseverance, okay? P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Perseverance. Now, this is a very, very long word, okay? But this word is something that separates the, you know, want to be's from the are people that want to do something versus people that actually do something and are successful and become a champion or a legend okay now the definition of perseverance is persistence in doing something okay persistence in doing something despite now remember, this is a word that Mr. Dean Trolley talked about, despite, it's like one of his favorite words, okay? Persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Perseverance means persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. How many of us have set a date before? Oh my God, this is my RD date. How many of us? Okay, now let's one up that. How many of you have ever given your date to a senior vice president and then not hit that date? And I will raise my hand for that because I was one of them, okay? Time after time after time, I had given Mr. Thomas a regional director date. But guess what, did it happen? No. But what was the one thing that I had that made me keep going? Per perseverance, right? Persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. When I gave Mr. Thomas our first RD date and we didn't achieve it, I felt like my chest collapsing. Like I felt like I failed. I felt like I was defeated right? I was like, dude, it's not that hard. Like, why don't people get it? Like, why can't I just get there? Why can't I just get there? Like, why can't I just be there already? Like, do you see like how cool their lives look? Like, can I just get there? Now, somebody like Mr. Thomas, he's a freaking legend in ACN. He's a legend in network marketing. He's been at the top of two companies, let alone one, right? One just wasn't enough. He's like, let me just do another one, right? Let me just do another one. But what was something that he had, like what Rocky had, that had him keep going and achieve that success? Is that word that I gave you, perseverance? He just would not quit. And he will tell you, he will flat out outwork you, but he will not give up, right? How many of us, like, life knocks us down, knocks us down, knocks us down? How many of us just stay there? We're like, okay, life, like, what now, right? Like, what's next, right? You can't stay there. This thing that we're going through together, you can't stay there. These emotions that you're feeling, it's okay to feel them, but don't make that your home. That's not where you belong. 
Like the emotions that we're feeling, one of the biggest ones is the first F word is fear. You can't stay there. Fear is paralyzing. And when we say, oh, but this happened, but this happened, we've experienced, Hussein, my husband is just now at another funeral for somebody at our church. We've experienced like losing so many people. And you guys know one of them too, my grandmother, I was out for like a couple days, right? A week. Mr. Thomas was like, take a week, like get your stuff together, right? You can't stay there. Your feelings turn into thoughts that turn into things. I'm going to say that again. Write that down. Your feelings turn into thoughts that turn into things. What feelings are you feeling right now? What are, what are those feelings going to turn into? What thoughts are they going to turn into? And then what things are those thoughts going to produce? Now, let me tell you something. Fear will not produce a positive outcome. Fear will never produce, well, yeah, probably never, but most of the time, don't quote me. Fear will not produce a positive outcome. Fear will produce a negative outcome, a negative thought, a negative thing. How many of us, we just start thinking about something negative and then you just go down this rabbit hole and it just one thing after another, one thing after another. And then pretty soon you feel like you're stuck. You feel like you're in this hole. You don't know how to get out, but guess what? Who is in control of your emotions? Point to yourself. Point to yourself. You are in control of your emotions. Maybe not your life. You're not in control, but you're in charge of your life, right? You're not in control of your life, but you are in charge of your life. But it's up to you to get out of that place. You cannot stay there. It is not your home. Life's gonna keep knocking you down, keep knocking you down, keep knocking you down. But guess what? Who do they make statues of? The people that persevered and got through it or the people that gave up and they were like, well, that didn't work. I'm just gonna stay here. My life is not gonna be anything. Like, who would you rather be? The first person or the second? I hope that you guys say the first person. I'd rather be the first person, right? That perseveres and they're like, no dude, like every single challenge you can overcome is gonna be added to your SVP speech. How many stories, and this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about, how many senior vice president promotions have we seen? And we're just like, now let, I'm gonna give you two scenarios and I want you to tell me which one you would be like rooting for and be like, oh my God, they're amazing, okay? First person, you know, walks up, the song's going, the music's going, they're just like, I did it, I did it, I did it. And they get up there and they're just like, Hey everyone, thank you so much. Like, I just want to thank, you know, I want to thank my mentors. I want to thank ACN, you know, it was so easy for me. Like, I don't know why this is so hard for people. Like, you know, I got to see Q right away and then I hit ETL in two days and then I hit regional director in like 10 days, but that was, I mean, that, I had to work for that. And then, you know, I hit regional vice president, you know, everyone supported me. I didn't have anybody telling me that this was a scammer. This wasn't going to work. Like everybody was on board with it. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Please tell me you would not love that person, right? Like that story, you'd just be like, crickets, crickets, like what just happened, right? Right, right? Okay, cool. Now let me tell you about the second person, okay? The second person is gonna say, look, growing up I had a really, really, really hard upbringing, okay? My parents were broke, they couldn't afford anything, right? Because we couldn't afford diapers, my mom had to potty train me earlier before I was like 10 months or something, I was potty trained because they couldn't afford diapers. My mom would make my clothes out of her old clothes that she would rip up and sew so that I had something to wear. I had to keep going. My family had to keep going. Growing up, I always had like something in me. I just had this feeling in me and it was just telling me that you're, you're here for something more, right? And, you know, growing up, I got made fun of. I was the outcast. And, you know, when I started ACN, when I finally found something that I felt like, you know what, this is it. Everybody rejected it. Everybody didn't, like, not everyone supported me. My parents told me, you know, this, was, this wasn't going to work. Why, why are you wasting your time when, you know, you went to school to be educated and to actually be something that 
you know, a title that holds weight, like a doctor, a lawyer or something. And, you know, but I saw something. I knew that this was something real. So I kept going, you know, yeah, I got CQ on the spot, but ETL took me months. It was hard. I got no after no after no. There were times where we couldn't pay some bills. There were times where we were just like, how are we going to make it through this month? But you know what? We just kept going. We were still paying our $39.99 back office at that time because, you know, we didn't want it to get canceled. So is it TV or back office, right? And, you know, getting to RD, that was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle, right? You know, there were, there were meetings that, you know, there were times that we wouldn't be able to buy food because we had to decide between, you know, paying for a hotel for international or to eat. There were times where we would pay for other people's meals, but we would just be sitting there like, oh, no, we're not hungry. Thanks. Who would you relate to more and who would you cheer for more? The first person or the second person? The second person. Now, majority of that is our story. My parents potty trained me early because we couldn't afford diapers. You know, my mom would take her clothes, cut them up, and she would sew clothes for me so that I wouldn't be naked running around the house as a baby. Now, each of you guys have a story. Each of you have something inside of you and you know that you're not just here on this earth to work, pay bills, and die. You have that flame that Sylvester Stallone had. He just found it. He found it and he stuck to it. Every single person needs to write out their SVP story and look at how many challenges you have. Because the more challenges you have, the better the story. Nobody makes a statue for someone that had everything easy. And that's how we want life. We want everything to be easy. We want everything to be handed to us. Well, oh my God, I can't believe I got a note. No, take it another way. Like Mr. Thomas says, flip it upside down. It says on, on to the next one. Like, no, you keep going. Because guess what? When you finally make it to RVP or SVP and all of us are there, cheering for you and you're up on that podium and hopefully you remember that Mr. Thomas had a lot to do with it right and this call right here had a little bit to do with it that all of us are there cheering for you and your story is gonna make into the hall of fame of ACN because of exactly what you went through and what you're going through right now so that's my call for today each and every one of you have that inside of you. You just have to find it and bring it out. Akiko, I wish I could give you a big hug because she's like bawling over there. I'm so sorry. But Mr. Thomas, I want to thank you again so much for giving me the chance to be on the call today. And I hope that, you know, our little bet that we had, that I did it. But Thank you guys so much. And I love you guys. If you guys ever need anything, need to talk, need anything, just reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to get back to you guys. Thank you guys so much, Mr. Thomas. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Miss Ismail. I'm sitting there looking at you. Now look at the comments. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I've got, wow. Look at that. That was such a great, uh, Miss Collins. So inspirational, new, raw, and wow. Thank you so much, Ms. Zora. Thank you. Wow. She's got, let's get, oh, <laughs> excellent call. Let's keep on giving her some accolades. She's going to break it out and cry. Miss Dressel, amazing Supergirl. All right. I like the background. Oh, Daryl Ranson, thank you. I love the background. I love the background. Up on the, ball, on the wall to the left, it says, keep going and to the right like a boss. And right behind on top, what do we have? A lioness. I love it. I love it. I love it. Touch my heart, Miss Pinion. Another lion and a lioness. Look at that. And the Brocky paintings. Oh, my God. Wow. What a great job today. Hey, can we show her some love? My God, what a great call today. What an awesome call. Man, what is your story? The bigger the challenge, the better the story. Lord have mercy. This was good stuff. I got eight pages of notes over here. Wow, tomorrow morning, Mr. Julian Lewis, I know you're watching, sir, so woo-hoo. We got Mr. Julian Lewis, <laughs> Mr. Dwight Williams, the awesome, inspirational. Thank you, Mr. Dwight Williams in Houston, Texas. Wow, we got people all over the place on the call today. 
hey, uh, wow, tomorrow, <laughs> Mr. Julian Lewis, I don't want to follow. <laughs> anyway, we got Mr. Julian Lewis tomorrow morning, Orrin Solomon on Wednesday. On Thursday, we got the uh, the Chicago Mafia will be on here with us on Mr. Chris King, such an amazing leader, so honored. Oh, wow, look at all the love that's coming for that call today. Why, my God, Lord, have mercy. Listen, I want to thank you. We're going to get into a cry here in a second, y'all. And I'll, I'll just keep giving her some flattery because that just melts our heart. Hey, we want to thank her husband, Mr. Ismail, because I know he's in the store listening. He wants to be. But I want to thank everybody for signing my voice. God bless you. It's a Monday. It's a great week to go to work. Build your business. Don't get sidetracked because of the weather. Don't get sidetracked because right now is a perfect time to dig in deep and go building before the summer's over, because right now summer's a little thin, but you, that's right, Mr. Tim Carrera uh, uh, up in Minnesota. Just, Mr. Gary DeBose in Atlanta, Georgia, thank you, sir. Just dig in, dig in. Ms. Driscoll, Miracle Morning and Miracle Monday Mind Mastery. There you go, Mr. Rizzo Vice President, Ms. Driscoll. So just dig in, remember, get it now, so when the fall comes, you're in position to grab that harvest, like Mr. Nathan Goldberg said in January, because we see the same thing. We're just trying to take your vision up to see what we see. But you got to plant the seed today to get the harvest in the fall, and especially in 2021. With that, God bless you all. Miss Ismail, what a great job. I'm going to give you a call in just a second. That was amazing. Everybody, God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see everybody. Don't forget Miss Joyce Brewers tonight at 6 o'clock. And tomorrow morning, Mr. Julian Lewis will be back with us. And tomorrow night, we'll be doing a 1 through 6, uh, 1 through 10 at 6 o'clock p.m. God bless. Start your week off in a great way, getting people qualified. God bless. Wow, wow, wow.